Intel's released the 13900KS, almost a stealth release, a rushed release. They've cut some corners, they've made some mistakes. Even the Intel Arc website has some, some oopsies. We'll talk about that. 13900KS, this is a legend in the making because it's six gigahertz out of the box. But this reminds me of a launch from very nearly 20 years ago, the Intel Pentium 4. They released a real hot, real fast Pentium 4. It was record breaking then. Six gigahertz out of the box, that's record breaking now. But I think there's a little bit more to the story. So if you ordered the 13900KS, the millisecond it was available, thanks Python script robots. That's, this is pretty much your unboxing experience. There's really not much to it. You know, it's plastic, Core i9, this box looks the same. They, they slapped a special edition sticker on it and boom, that's pretty much it. Okay, we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna do a build for the 1%. $700! right here, by the way, which is quite an upgrade in price over the i9. Maybe Intel's gonna do a stealth price increase where you can only buy the KS, you can't buy the i9 anymore, and it's just $200 more. Anyway, if we're doing a 1% build, of course, it's gonna feature the NVIDIA 4090 because there is literally nothing faster. There's also nothing that uses more electricity. So to support that, I'm going to go with the FSP Group Hydro PTM Pro. Now this has the extra PCIe 5 connector on it. These just came back in stock. So they can't make them fast enough. FSP Group has a uh, well-known name for itself, good reputation, I should say, in the server market, server power supply market. And so this is FSP Group's engineering for the server market distilled down into desktop PC power supplies. 1200 watts, 1200 watts is overkill for just a single GPU system. This is more like something I would use in some of my higher end builds. And in fact, I do use this in the higher end build, but this, this dongle cable thing is utterly ridiculous. I don't like this, but if you're gonna deal with this kind of a power connector on your GPU, because there's not a lot of other options, this power supply has the connector for that built in as I've shown in other videos. For the rest of our build, we're going with the MSI Z790 Godlike. Why the MSI Z790 Godlike? Because this is obviously a motherboard for the 1% build. It comes with a cool little LCD screen. It says a bunch of stuff on it. Has built in 10 gigabit ethernet. There is a lot to like here about this motherboard for the absolute maximum highest end. Now you could go for the 0.1% build, which would include custom loop cooling. I've instead opted for the, the MSI Asetek partnership 360 millimeter cooler with a built-in LCD screen. That's got the bling, but a second runner-up that I would mention is also the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 that I've reviewed previously, the 420 millimeter version. 420 millimeters is a larger cooling area, and we really do need that for the 13900KS. So if you look at the Intel Arc page for this processor, you can see that it does actually have some significant upgrades over to the 13900. For one, the E cores, the efficiency cores, their base clock and boost clock is higher. We've also got a little bit more wattage. It's not listed on the ARC page, but 320 watts is an option. Some motherboard vendors are building that option directly into BIOS where you can just pick the 320 watt profile, which means that you need enough cooling to be able to handle that. And, you know, sort of delidding and direct die cooling and stuff like that makes sense. Again, that's maybe more on the 0.1% side. For memory, we have a G-Skill Trident Z7200. I've reviewed that separately as well. That makes perfect sense for this build, which you'll see in just a minute. I've opted to use the Mesh Phi 2 white from Fractal. Now you can pick a higher end case. I like the Define cases for noise dampening, but for airflow, this one's hard to beat unless you go with the Torrent or another case from, you know, whatever you like for cases, but I like this. Oh yeah, what are you using for storage in a 1% build? Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is the Intel Optane P5800X. It's about $1,600 for 800 gigabytes or several thousand dollars if you enter the multi-terabyte range. But I've got two P5800Xs here. They are unmatched. They're PCI Express 4 uh, in terms of latency and throughput. They're enterprise grade NVMe and they do need cooling. I've got two of them on an X8 PCIe add-in card, but I'm only gonna run one at PCI Express by four in this configuration because I want my GPU to have all 16 lanes for these benchmarks that we're doing. 
Now, as we look at the benchmarks with the out-of-the-box configuration, again, running our overclocked DDR5, two sticks of memory at 7200, plus our six gigahertz thermal velocity boost. Now, really, real world, that's more like 5.8 gigahertz, and our game boost is really more on the order of like 5.6. So that's very modest gains over the 13900K for real world gaming. And so you might expect that the benchmarks, especially around 1080p with the 4090, are not dramatically different. And yet, as we see here and here with our game benchmarks, the performance is actually quite a bit higher. 13900KS, secretly the star of the show? No, it's actually our G-Skill memory, our DDR5-7200. I mean, with this platform, we're talking about a maximum theoretical memory bandwidth with the overclock of just about 100 gigabytes per second, theoretical. In real world, we're seeing north of 70 gigabytes per second with this memory kit which is substantial for games that are limited by this round trip between system memory, PCIe peripherals, and the CPU, sort of the triumvirate of high frame rate gaming, then yeah, this performance uplift really is breathtaking. But it's not really the 13900KS that's enabling that. It's the better memory controller, maybe, theoretically, Silicon Lottery, you know, because it's still technically an overclock. If we look at ARC here, uh, the DDR5 performance numbers aren't really any better. It's like, okay, this is what it supports, so 7200 is definitely an overclock. It also depends on your board. You have to get the highest end board, eight or more PCB layers. There's a whole lot of dependencies that go into being able to run the thing at full memory speed. The good news is that you don't necessarily have to dump 300 watts of power into the CPU. I mean, sure, that's kind of cool for your all-core sustained, you know, 16 efficiency cores, eight performance cores number, and you get some pretty cool stuff in the benchmark. But for gaming, those efficiency cores generally don't really make a huge difference. The difference they make is that they run interference for all the crap going on in the background. The game can get all the performance cores and all the crap you got going on in the background with Discord and Capture and you know whatever else, those can live on efficiency cores and that will help your 1% lows, that'll help everything else, assuming that the Windows scheduler can get everything correct, which, you know, from game to game, doesn't always do it. I mean, here we are, uh, I don't wanna call this three generations later, but here we are three generations later, and Far Cry 6 still struggles with these efficiency cores. From run to run, there's a lot of variation, and when you actually play the game, okay, admittedly, it's not as bad as it was, but it's not as good as I would expect it to be in terms of the uplift from the K to the KS, and and everything in between. So then I got to thinking, what's the real MVP here? What if we put that 7200 memory into the 13900K? That is actually where you should spend your money first. So these 1% builds sort of give us a clue. It's like, where should you spend your money? What do you do if you, uh, you know, are looking for the biggest bang for your buck, but still at that upper echelon of system? I mean, just because you're a one percenter doesn't mean that you became a one percenter by spending all your money on the best thing that's absolutely available. And then you can actually step down to the i7. The i7, can't you buy like two of these for the price of the, the i9 13900KS? Yeah, yeah you can. And for gaming, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, even if you're doing this 1080p stuff. Now I'll also give you the rant, which is related to this, which is if you're buying a 4090 and a 13900KS and you're still gaming at 1080p, that's a little odd. There are a couple of people that made a, a case for that on the level one forum, but it's sort of unusual. And when you step up to 1440p or 4K, there is functionally no difference even between an i7 and the 13900KS. When you keep the memory the same and the performance of everything else in the system the same, mostly. It's okay, three and a half percent variation, worst case scenario. But real world, I think, is actually less than that. I get why Intel didn't really sample anybody for the 13900KS, meaning that they sent them to reviewers ahead of time, because even at six gigahertz, even with the bump in E cores, functionally, there's not a lot of difference between the 13900K and the 13900KS. But also, it sure seems like the 12700K, which is also very close in performance to the 13700K, although the 13700K is better, again, you know, in that 5% range. Uh, it looks like the, the 12th gen has become more expensive from Intel if you're buying those versus the 13th gen. So are they phasing those out? Has production ended? Is that perfectly normal in the supply chain? Probably, but it's something to watch. 
And then there are, all, there are also competitive parts from other vendors also available in the market because maybe you want to build a Team Red system and maybe that's an option and blah, blah, blah. You're not going to enjoy DDR5 7200 on a Team Red system. So depending on what your gaming goals are, maybe that's important to you. But for 1440p and 4K gaming, the memory speed between 6000 and 7200 doesn't make a huge difference. It's really interesting that we look at the KS and say, oh, the thing that benefits the KS the most is maybe you have a slightly higher chance of getting better silicon for the memory controller more than the six gigahertz clock speed more than everything else. It's important to understand that that six gigahertz boost is really a thermal velocity boost, which means that it's only gonna do it opportunistically. Uh, if you roasted Team Red for their you know, fleeting boosts a generation ago, you're gonna experience basically the same thing on this Team Blue part for those six gigahertz thermal velocity boosts. But you do get some, you know, that aside, you do get some solid gains in terms of the, the E-Core boost and then maybe a little bit higher game clocks and a little bit higher everything else. I mean, the silicon really has been and it is a little better quality silicon for those things, but I get why there wasn't a lot of fanfare. I'm Wildless at Level 1. This has been a quick look at the 13900KS. I'm signing out and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Mm -hmm.